Here's Brody Brazil. So here we are, one day removed from one of the biggest days in Sharks franchise history as they secure the number one spot in the 2024 NHL entry draft and will likely get the services of Macklin Celebrini. Now, I thought about doing this video last night as some of the excitement not simmered down, but maybe more of the brain actually got to do some thinking and realizations. And what I wanted to touch on here is the reality of Celebrini. Now that the dust has settled, that's probably the best way to put it, and the excitement turns into focus, we're realizing what the reality of getting the number one draft pick is for this franchise, something they've never had before. And if I'm being honest, yesterday and the weeks and months leading into yesterday, and even as the regular season was winding down and I thought the Sharks might get the worst overall record and the best opportunity to pick first. If I'm being honest, I was prepared to be disappointed by yesterday and the entire process. And we saw the ping pong balls and we know it's random, but we also understand that the Sharks luck sometimes doesn't always favor the franchise or the fans. And they've made their own breaks. They've gotten a few breaks here or there, but when have the Sharks ever had this like 25% kind of luck, as in a 25.5% chance that they would actually get the first overall pick. It turned out, it worked out, so maybe that's some of my own mentality of expect nothing, receive everything, but it certainly did feel like that going into yesterday, and I just wanted to document that here, that in reverse, I don't want to sit there and tell you, oh, I knew it was a lock, or I knew they had a good chance. I thought they had, yeah, the one in four chance, and odds were we might have all come away disappointed. And even if you got the number two or they couldn't have got lower than number three, but two or three, there would have been certain amounts of disappointment towards that just because the name out there was Macklin Celebrini. So if I'm being honest, I was prepared for the worst. We obviously got the best. And when it came down to Anaheim getting the third pick and it was either San Jose or Chicago for number one, I mean, you saw my reaction here on the YouTube channel. All I could think was, not Chicago. It can't be Chicago. Not again. They just got Connor Bedard. Last year, they leapfrogged Columbus and Anaheim. They were the number three seed to get the number one overall pick. Not again. And if it happened, I mean, it didn't, so we don't have to go there. I think it would have started conspiracies. It would have started, you know, a whole movement of fans saying, wait, Chicago two years in a row and they weren't even the number one seed to get the number one overall draft pick. So in a way, I mean, we don't have to worry about this either. I'm just glad it wasn't Chicago for a lot of reasons. Number one, so that the Sharks could get the number one pick. But when it came down to those two, I mean, it was almost like, you got to be kidding me, but it all worked out. I'm also glad that this is kind of a no-brainer draft year. I mean, imagine a draft class where there was not a number one clear-cut choice. Everybody's in on Macklin Celebrini. But imagine if it was, hey, there's a superstar D-man, there's a goalie you could pick, there's somebody with whatever situation, right, that you just weren't sure about A or B. And the Sharks would have been put in this difficult spot. Like, they're both great choices, but you got to take the fork in the road. And what happens if you thought you took the right fork in the road and it turned out over time that something didn't work out? Now, look, this is the draft. This is why we love sports, because we don't know how anything works out, including Macklin Celebrini. But in this case, we've got a pretty good idea. And the consensus is he's the guy. He's the number one pick. Nobody's going to question this decision by San Jose one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. This is what you're going to do if you get the number one pick. My point is, in a way, they're so fortunate that they don't even have to worry. This is kind of a no brainer year. I didn't know how, know how else to say it. You get to take the pick that everybody's expecting. It's just like last year. Connor Bedard was number one. Now, after that, Carlson, Fantilli, there were a bunch of names that would go two, three, four, and on and on. And this year's draft will obviously carry the same weight after the number one pick. But it's so nice to be in one of these draft years where the number one has established himself as a clear cut. And there's no make or break of the franchise. This is what they're going to do. And when the Sharks take Macklin Celebrini, obviously they're drafting him for potential and talent on the ice and what he can bring to this team eventually, right, over time as he develops. 
But you're getting more than a player before he even turns into the player that he's bound to be. Macklin Celebrini for the Sharks is going to generate interest. He's going to sell tickets and jerseys. He's going to help rejuvenate this fan base, as I say here, to a much needed degree. Now, it's not entirely all going to be Macklin Celebrini. But even if Macklin Celebrini is the draw and the hook and it gets some people to come back out to the tank and realize, hey, the rebuild has been going on and I know it's rough and it's hard to look at sometimes and it's been ugly, but this is kind of the sign of the time and the turnaround. And all right, now we've got some pieces. And by the way, there's still a full 2024 NHL draft where the Sharks have a bunch of picks before 45, which I'll discuss later on. But just as for Celebrini himself, being the number one pick, in any sport, in any draft, you're always going to generate and garner attention. And for the Sharks, like I said, they need that in a multitude of ways. And look, this is not to throw a bunch of pressure on young Macklin Celebrini. Develop at your own pace. We will watch this happen. We understand you're not going to you're not going to come in and, and be the Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid caliber yet or or even whenever. But the point being People want something to watch and root for. We know it's not a finished product yet. We know that it's going to be a growth. And when time is right, you'll be there. And when time is right, you'll grow and mature and all that stuff. But even just the the interest level of this. I'm old enough to remember, not that old, but when Patrick Marlowe was drafted, there was a big buzz that summer of 1997. Hey, the Sharks got the number two overall pick. This guy named Marlowe, he's supposed to be a big deal. And... Yeah, we kind of know how that went. We also know that the Sharks eventually got the number one pick of the 97 draft. That was Joe Thornton. So again, when you have a a number two, or in this case, a number one, you're going to generate a lot of interest. And don't forget last year's number four overall pick, Will Smith, when he eventually arrives, and maybe that'll be simultaneous. We'll talk about that later on in the video. This hits different. To get the number one overall draft pick, and I know Sharks fans will say it's just kind of like the Red Wings series and advancing in, in the 93-94 season, or this is kind of like beating Las Vegas in Game 7 of 2019, or, or you pick, whatever, advancing to the Stanley Cup Final in 2016, or some of those Western Conference Final uh, appearances getting to the Conference Final in the 2010s. But this is not like that at all. I mean, it has the same feeling of like, yeah, all right, you know, you're happy, you're motivated, you're... You're into this, but this carries on because this is not like winning a a game or a series. Those things have an expiration date. You kind of get over those because, well, another game or series comes unless it's the Stanley Cup and the final and you win the cup. But this excitement of getting the first overall draft pick and having a player like Macklin Celebrini, this gets to last for years. And so Sharks fans, like, you're not even accustomed to something like this typically. And when the team was so good and winning for so long, and there weren't these high draft picks, you were drafting 27th and 29th, and that's fine, but they don't generate, like, the type of buzz that a number one overall draft pick brings. And so this excitement, as I said, it should last for years and years. So what happened yesterday is not just a, hey, we'll celebrate yesterday and we'll celebrate on, what, June 27th when the draft happens. This is like... You get to celebrate it yesterday, today, June, October, February, February 2029. You know what I'm saying? Like this goes on and on. And I think that's the exciting part that that we haven't even fully realized yet. Okay, the Sharks don't even have a head coach right now. If you're watching this video later on in the summer and you're recapping this, well, then probably they do. But as of this point and the way that the sequence plays out, David Quinn has been relieved of his duties, and the Sharks have still yet to hire their next head coach. Now, clearly, they're in a position of having coaches out there that want to coach this team. There's no shortage of people who want to coach the Sharks, but now you really have something lucrative in knowing that the next coach to take over is probably going to get Macklin Celebrini and probably Will Smith and probably Quentin Musty and probably some others, which I'll list in just a second, sooner than later. So you get the... the, the dual benefit here, if, if you're the Sharks, you get to pick your next person and what they can be specifically for the individuals you now know you have. And maybe the, I don't think the Sharks wait till after the draft to hire a coach. I don't know. Probably sooner than later, but I also know they want to take their time. My point is, any head coach comes in now knows they have a number one draft pick in the garage and some other really talented players in the garage. So not to make this all about Celebrini, but how much more attractive is this job even right now? than it ever has before to coach the team. And oh yeah, I talked about it's more than Celebrini. It's him. It's going to be the number 14th overall draft pick. By the way, the Sharks got the Penguins draft pick. 
from the Carlson trade. It was going to be a top 10 protected. It turns out the Penguins got 14. They can't protect it. It goes to San Jose. When it happened, I was almost a little bit let down in saying, I wish that Pittsburgh pick would have slipped all the way up to 11, right? Because then it's as close as you can get without being protected. But at 14, they'll still get a really good player to go along with Celebrini and Will Smith and Quentin Musty and William Eklund and Thomas Bordalo and Jack Thompson and Colin Graff and Fabian Zetterlin and Casper Haltman and Shakir Makamadoulin and David Edstrom. So you're getting all these names and more, by the way. I just, I didn't have room here. And there's some other ones I'm excited about that I think are flying below the radar, goalies especially. But the point being is, it's not just Macklin Celebrini. We're going to focus on that, and he might be the default leader of all this just because where he was drafted. And it's kind of like Patrick Marlowe over the years. Was Patty a leader of the Sharks? Yeah, I mean, obviously he was captain for a certain period. But you needed the Joe Pavelskis and the Ryan Close and the Dan Boyles and, oh, the Joe Thorntons and the, the Rob Blakes when they came in and on and on and on. The Manny Malholtras. I mean, I'll go layer by layer here. So... Macklin might be the next Mr. Shark or whatever you want to call it, or, you know, he'll have some some nickname, but it's going to be these others that help provide the width and the depth of the foundation for San Jose that's going to be so important. So don't sleep on the pipeline. How about this? You've got a junior shark, like recently from the last five years, now as the number one draft pick of the San Jose Sharks. This photo was uncovered. This is going to make you feel super old. This is the 2019-20 season. There's Macklin Celebrini in a Junior Shark sweater. I think that was the U14 team right there. Still rocking the birdcage like Brazil. Well, they have to. I need to. But isn't that amazing? And I'm sure more photos are going to be surfacing here sooner than later of Macklin, especially as the draft approaches. But look at that shot right there. That right there, wearing 17, now he's 71, that's Macklin Celebrini as a junior shark. That is incredible how full circle this has come. We obviously know his dad, Rick, trainer for the Golden State Warriors. They've lived in the area. He's very familiar with all of this. He's already got some connections, just rubbing shoulders with people from the sharks over the years, obviously being a junior shark. This is so cool. And this is not just a fun story looking back. This is now something moving forward that the Sharks can tout every single time his name is mentioned. Former junior Shark Macklin Celebrini. Look, kids, you're from the Bay Area. Here's a kid who wasn't from here but moved here and played for the junior Sharks and eventually was the Hobie Baker winner and eventually was the number one overall draft pick by your hockey team. Kids, this goes to show you you can play for the junior Sharks and be selected first in the NHL draft. Now, It's not to promise every kid that, but it's just to show them that a path exists. It's also for him to go back over to the rink and be present with kids. Like, this is such an inspiration. And you talk about the growth of hockey in our region, this non-traditional hockey market. And it is. It is. Trust me. I mean, I, I was here when it wasn't really a hockey market or it really wasn't a hockey market. But the point being is that this is such an inspiration now to have somebody like this with his trajectory and the Junior Sharks angle. By the way, he had 94 points In 54 games on the U14 team back in 2019-20. Yeah. So he was a player back then, and this is the cool part, right? Like, he has connections to this already. And let's not forget, I mentioned this 2024 draft class. Yeah, the focus is all going to be on number one. It should be. It's the low-hanging fruit. Well, it's the high-hanging fruit. But the Sharks also have picks number 14, 33, right? That starts off the second round. And then 42 is their pick from the Devils, which I still think was part of the Timo Meyer trade, right? So the Sharks get four draft picks in the first 42 of 2024. That'll be easy to remember down the, fu- in, down the road in the future. First, no, no, no. Four picks in 24. No. How, do, how, how, how will I say this? Four of the first 42 in 24. There we go. We did it. So my point is here, it's not going to be just Celebrini as the takeaway from this draft. What if you get a stud at at 14 or 33 and 42 or whatever? Those picks and those players will also be super imperative to this process. And I just, I don't want to diminish any of that because of Celebrini. Naturally and inherently, the celebration around Celebrini is going to happen. But let's also remember that there's... A couple other picks to be had here. And I know the Sharks are taking the rest of the draft seriously. 
Obviously, they still have to. I mean, just because number one is kind of done for them, they'll work even harder to figure out the options for those other picks. But they got to make sure that they capitalize on the rest of those picks too. Okay, NHL ready. Is Celebrini NHL ready? If it's time for Will Smith to be NHL ready, when is Quentin Musty NHL ready? It's going to be very interesting to watch the decisions made here sooner than later with Macklin and the timing of some of the other prospects around uh, the Sharks as it relates to the timing of arriving at the NHL. Like, you want to be decisive in all this. You don't want to have guys come up and down, and then it is time, and then it's not time, and it's time for some of you. But that you you can't bring the group up entirely together. Like, I don't know that that – it's not a one-size-fits-all type situation. But you want to be very decisive and predictable about, okay, we're it's time for Celebrini, and maybe it's time for Celebrini and Will Smith. Okay, now it's time for this player, that player. The point is, is – this is, this is important, right? Because you don't want to expose a young player too soon just because you have the urgency now of having this, this toy chest. You don't want to have all your toys out in the room and make a mess out of things. And then one gets lost and stepped on and broken. Can you tell I'm a dad? You know what I'm saying, right? Like you need to really make sure that you foster the development of all these players. Celebrini, obviously, at the forefront, but there are some interesting decisions to be made with him and the timing of these other prospects going to the NHL. You just got to be clear-cut, got to be straightforward. And that's what the Sharks are going to work on, right? To figure out how exactly this all shakes out. So that's the reality of Macklin Celebrini for me. I mean, this is such a good thing. I hope some of these thoughts made sense. There was just a lot going on in my brain yesterday. And even as I did the live reaction video, I felt like, wow, my my commentary and what I'm bringing to this video and to the table, it wasn't good because I was just, I was all, I was all here and not much up here because, it, you know, this part was ready to get let down. I didn't have, like I said, high expectations. And all of a sudden when it happened, I'm like, uh, I don't even know what to say. I knew this was a 25% chance, but I, I didn't know it was coming. So that's what I wanted to do here was set out the reality of Macklin Celebrini. And hey, you made it to the end of this video. You know I really appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That'll help me and this channel and this video. And by the way, I hope you subscribe to the channel because you know why? I would love to see you back here next time. So go down there right now. Take care of that. And we will see you soon.